I was telling uh, Kristen, this is like the time of year where I finally thaw out and I'm good for another six months until November, where I freeze again. <laughs> Someone that gets my uh, temperature, like, what would that be called? Hmm. Preference? <laughs> nice. <laughs> and like the cold water thing? Oh my gosh. Mm. Wait, do you like hot tubs? Yeah. Hmm. He's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> we're different. Well, He's we were talking about same. it the other day because I was like, oh, man, I always thought it would be cool to get a hot tub. And then I realized that Jen hates hot tubs. And then she's like, no, I, I don't, don't hate hot tubs. Yeah. It's, she hates getting out of them. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. And I hate so that too, was yeah. the thing where it was like the walk from our side door to wherever a hot tub would make sense. If it's anywhere but the corner of our driveway, <laughs> she would hate it. And even then, she'd be like, but we have to walk outside to get inside. And, I, and then I'm thinking, oh, the like... winter, it's snowing, we're in the hot tub. Oh, She's so like, nice. no, if it's colder than 70 degrees out, I'm not going in. <laughs> so I was like, all right, no hot tub for us. I mean, I don't know. I like the hot tub. I like, like at yours, at your place, your parents' yeah, place, I yeah. like going into the freezing water and freezing mm. and then going into the hot tub knowing the relief is knowing right the relief there. is yeah. right there yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. but right, the only, when you're getting like, out yeah when you're getting out and there's no relief and you're just going into a, like the cold darkness of but the cold dark when void. you get out of a hot that's so dramatic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I <missed>. when the <laughs> getting out of the cold dark void <laughs> yeah um no but i feel like getting out of a hot tub like your body is just hot yeah, exactly. So, like, I stay in until I, I'm basically so, yeah, sweating and like good. overheated. Yeah, because I had a friend in high school, I think. We went in the hot tub and we all got out and took a picture in the snow in our bathing suits. And like, we, you didn't really feel it. You right. guys are cold blooded then, I am, or warm blooded. That doesn't happen to me. I will get out of a hot tub and instantly freeze. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you feel like that's how I feel, but I haven't done it enough to know. Because like I'll be sitting in the hot tub and I'm like, I have to get out because I'm overheating. Right. <laughs> well, we right. did in, like one cabin trip. It was cold ish out and i wasn't it you were i, I felt like it took a lot yeah. of convincing <laughs> there's, there's <proof. laughs> like we were out there like a bunch of times and every time we're looking in you're like reading it's on like the couch or something thing with like getting wet that's my thing yeah because like i i feel i associate wet with being cold yeah yeah it's fair yeah so anyway it's a great point we'll see me we'll get out <laughs> <laughs> there's other things on the list but we are not going to be polar plunging that's for sure Ugh. oh my I gosh mean, I, I, I was like we must be really healthy because people are doing what we're feeling all the time yeah i know yeah to get I health am, benefits I, i'm like i'm always <laughs> freezing so like i am polar I'm plunging 24 7 <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, nice. you guys are light years ahead of us yeah seriously cold shock proteins yeah, all day that's how I feel. That is great. Mm, I didn't well, write summaries all again. I to sorry. Do. Uh, that's all right. These are, these are easy summaries. <clears throat> you guys ready? Yes. Um, yes. All right. We there's so much to talk about. I almost feel like we should just skip an intro and just jump right into it. <laughs> you guys are good at that? Because I don't want to <laughs> so ask fair. like, what do you guys yeah. think of Snape? Because that, that's going to lead us into like yeah, exactly. an hour and yeah. forty-five that's a good discussion, point. and then you know we're going to go from there. So welcome to the podcast. I'm John. Jen. Danny and Kristen. And this, is Harry this, Potter. <laughs> this is Harry Potter and the first time readers. <laughs> Ogden's fire whiskey was uh, spicy. <laughs> oh, that's you. Okay, uh, we are on chapter 32, which is the Elder One, and we're doing 33 as well, which is a great chapter of the Princess Tale. We have a lot to talk about in each one. But can one of you guys give me a very quick summary of chapter 32, which is the Elder Wand? Can you do it? I yeah, I think so. This chapter is when the battle is happening and they're kind of running through the battle to get to the Whomping Willow. Oh, that's right. Then they poke the uh, the knot in the tree. They run through the corridor to mm -hmm. get to the Shrieking Shack and they're watching through a crack in it or behind a cupboard or something and they're watching everything go down with Voldemort and Snape where... Only Harry can see. Oh, is yeah. that true? Oh, was he under the invisibility cloak yeah, or something? Yeah, he was like the beginning yeah, of the tunnel. Yeah, he was the beginning of the train. And oh, the others couldn't see. Wow, that's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. And then 
it's when the chapter ends when Harry goes over and Snape tells him to look in his eyes. And then I think right then the chapter ends. So this yep. chapter is mm-hmm. all the lead up yeah. to what I've been thinking about all week long. <laughs> <laughs> no, like seriously. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. so good though, right? Yeah, it's so what, Isn't it and such a revelation? And I just want to tell people, but no one cares. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just want to like talk Welcome about to it. being a book nerd. And I was like, no one even like. Can you believe it? <laughs> and I was like, no, wait, I yeah, literally that's did like it. Years old. No, even at my parents' um, dinner. Oh, you I brought, brought it up, it up to uh, to Lauren, no to every all my siblings that have seen it, <laughs> and I was like, I just found out about Stapes. Like background, <laughs> no one cared. <laughs> <laughs> just like, moving on. I yeah. thought for sure Brandon would have yeah, like what the heck? that. Yeah. He mm. probably only saw the movies, which probably didn't yeah, show I know anything. that's why when he reads the books and we get him on <laughs> the podcast doesn't. and he's good. <laughs> anyway, so it was just funny. funny. I just kept replaying over and over again, and then I'm like, I was right this whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you just want to talk well, to people like, about semi-right. it. Semi right. Well, well this is the night. Well, we're going to talk about it. In yeah. Depth. All right. Sorry. <clears> so it's going to be great. Um. Okay, so one of the first little moments that happens in this chapter, I actually thought this was a fascinating one, um, is Ron's just intense anger and grief at his brother's death. So this is the line that we get. It said, she had pulled Ron behind a tapestry. They seemed to be wrestling together. And for one mad second, Harry thought that they were embracing again. Then he saw that Hermione was trying to restrain Ron to stop him running after Percy. Listen to me. Listen, Ron. I want to help. I want to kill Death Eaters. His face was contorted, smeared with dust and smoke, and he was shaking with rage and grief. Ron, we're the only ones who can end it. Please, Ron, we need the snake. We've got to kill the snake, said Hermione. But Harry knew how Ron felt. Pursuing another Horcrux would not bring the satisfaction of revenge. He, too, wanted the fight to punish them. The people who had killed Fred, and he wanted to find the other Weasleys. Or, and, and find, yeah, find the other, other Weasleys. And above all, make sure, make quite sure that Jenny was not but he could not permit that idea to form in his mind. What do you guys think of the Weasley's grief and what they're going through at this moment, especially Ron's in particular? <laughs> their poor family. I know. Yeah. They're taking uh, the brunt yeah. a lot. Seriously. Yeah, they're putting themselves at the the front of these fights. Well, yeah. even from the beginning, though. Like the oh, yeah. The dad, the mom. And even like taking Harry in to begin with, I think they knew was not safe. Mm-hmm. You know, so they've been risking things all along. That's so why it stinks I, to see it. Yeah, I love them because they do risk everything. And like even Harry's ability to have empathy with him in, in these moments, and like he feels the same thing. But Harry still has the idea that he's like not part of the family, which he's not. But in Mrs. Weasley's this is like another child of his, and that's why I love even the moment with that Harry. I think it's in this book that like he hugs her and tries to put like a lot of you know the unsaid things into that mm. hug, and um, for what Mrs. Weasley has gone through, she's like just a a great character but man this is it's so sad and even on this point there's another line that gets mentioned after um that hagrid runs off and uh he seems to get like taken over by spiders but we don't really know about anything that happens after that is hagrid dead i have doubted hagrid on many occasions for many things <laughs> But I got to trust his animal instincts on this one. (laughs) So, no, it's just like, I feel like I view him as childlike in a lot of ways, terrible at keeping secrets. Um, He did send Ron and Harry and almost to their deaths to the spiders. But I actually think he is alive and well and led the spiders away and he is fine. I have confidence in that for some reason. Um, I would be very upset if he was dead, not only because of his death, but because of the injustice of it all. Yeah, for sure. To go down like that, I mean, I'm sure he would happily die. It's a poetic die end. As like, you guys yeah, exactly. That actually would make a lot of sense. Yeah. But it would it would do a, a disservice to his character yeah. because then it would be kind of like this whole time we've been doubting when the substitute teacher comes in. Even Hermione is like, she's kind of a better teacher. It's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, so he's not a good teacher, but he's good with animals. That's been his thing. So for him to then misjudge that would be weird unless we find out somehow that he knew this was what it was going to be and he wanted to be food to his critters <laughs> and he wanted to lead them <laughs> away in the process. Himself. Then I could be like a little okay with it. Um, <laughs> but I refuse to believe that he is dead because he's on, he's high on my do not kill list. Yeah. JK. 
if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Change the text if, it's, if it goes that way. Well, you guys were pretty devastated with uh, Lupin and Tonks, right? Yeah. That one well, it was a curveball. And it was just like, boom, they're gone, they're yeah, dead. And their what, bodies what are in the there. world? Um, so, yeah, that was really harsh. What's going to happen to to their kid i know so uh, then i'm thinking i feel like i expected her to die though when she said like where's lupin yeah hmm. i was like you're risking everything yeah to find him yeah i don't and know then, i feel like that's so hard because it's like you're a new mom but i get it it's just i don't know i wasn't surprised and tonks she dad died. has already been killed too yeah, so only the grandma is alive. Grandma and baby now, right? Yeah. Um, it's sad. Yeah, just really sad. Um, and the fact that it went by so quickly, but it was good timing for it to happen uh, as we're reading because Harry walks us through it and yeah. kind of says, we don't have time for grief. I'm saying we as if we're like running with them because that's how it feels. He's like, I don't have time for grief. I don't have time to process this. I'm going to bury these emotions for now. Yep. There are more important things. And it, even as a reader, I'm like, all right, yeah, you're right, Harry. We're going to bury these emotions and move on more important yep. stuff. And then uh, on we go on the mission. So it was, you know, guided, but that's why it's tough because it, yeah, she doesn't give you any time to process because the characters don't give any time to process. They die and then you're yeah. like, we have yeah. to get to the, the Shrieking Shack no matter what. So these lines come out of nowhere, and then you're like, dang. Even like the Lavender Brown moment, she's like bitten by this werewolf, seems to be dead, and then all of a sudden Fenrir Greyback dies, uh, gets smashed in the head and like doesn't move anymore. Maybe just gets knocked out. And then you're just like, next thing happens. Yeah, and we did see there was a word of hope in there. I forget what it was about like she was still alive. Something mm -hmm. that told us she was still alive, but not good yeah so <laughs> yeah yeah so we get to the the next section which is they're at the the whomping willow and we have this line which i wanted to ask if you see if this line is familiar where is the first because oh. we heard this line before it says how how are we going to get in panted ron i can see the place if we just had crookshanks again crookshanks we used hermione bent double clutching her chest are you a wizard or what? Do you remember where we get that line? The first time we got that line? Um, Hermione says it, right? Uh, no. Oh. You're close. She gets it said too. Oh, wait. Does Ron say it? But what was the context? Yeah, Ron says this to Hermione. I kind of vaguely remember. With the, in the very first book. When they're in the um, oh for the plant getting out of yeah, <laughs> yeah the devil's oh. snare oh. she's like oh we really need some light but there's no light in this and Ron goes are yeah, you a witch yeah, or yeah, not yeah you're right so I love it because Hermione's mm. been storing up this line to show just back waiting down. To <laughs> that's so <laughs> great just wow waiting. I totally missed that nice <laughs> it's a great line um, um yeah what did happen to Crookshanks hmm. Still holding out hope, Crookshanks. <laughs> <Crookshanks laughs> <is dead too. laughs> no. Huh? I don't even. What happened? He just ran away. Yeah, we don't really know. Yeah, just watch. like during the battle it's in like the castle some somewhere. Character. <laughs> it's like really <laughs> yeah. important. It's the That's most important character. And Regulus Black. He's gonna <laughs> save Harry's life. Uh. Go on his chest. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, saves him up. Yeah. Great, because it's in the Shrieking Shack, so maybe uh, Crookshanks has been in the Shrieking Shack the whole time. Um, uh, what do you think about the information that Voldemort is telling Snape? So it's really essentially all about the Elder One. Yeah. Are you asking if we believe it? Yeah, do you believe it? And is, it, like, I guess, do you believe it? Is but it maybe, still, maybe the main question is... Is it actually the Elder One? Okay, is it actually the Elder Wand, and is Voldemort the rightful yes. owner? Because if you believe it, then he's the rightful owner of the Elder Wand. That, well, I mean, if it is, would, we're assuming it is the Elder Wand. We are assuming, And that yeah. Snape didn't know that Dumbledore <laughs> had the yeah. Elder Wand. <laughs> That's what I find weird. Um, Because he would yeah. then, or he knew he had the Elder Wand, but didn't realize what came with it. No, everyone knows about it. Because he killed Dumbledore, so he would have known. Yeah, but Snape right doesn't know that much. Now we know he doesn't no, even know like about No, but like everyone seems to know about this Elder Wand, no? 
Oh, and know that it exists. Yeah. And then it, whoever defeats it gets it. I feel like, yeah, that's at least wizard lore, mm. but. Or takes it. I, I feel like it's the kind of thing that would just escape your mind and you're not like thinking about it actively. Yeah. You know, or it's like something Dumbledore you heard is as a kid. just wise too, and he just doesn't tell anybody that he has it all Right. So, like, when Snape kills him, really, Dumbledore. Oh, well, that's this, what these, I was wondering. Yeah, these two next two chapters are interesting because is does it make Dumbledore more manipulative and like sleazy in your head that he's really setting Snape up for everything here? So, if yeah. Dumbledore owns the Elder Wand and Snape's about to kill him, but doesn't know that he owns the Elder Wand, and all of a sudden Snape's going to become the rightful owner of the Elder Wand, and Voldemort is going to know that Snape is just a middleman that Dumbledore is setting up so that he can die. Or he can be a buffer from getting the Elder Wand to maybe the last minute or something like that. Right. So that's, like, again, that is Voldemort's logic. Is there flaw in that logic? Is he right? As I was reading it, it kind of sounded right. Hmm. And I'm trying to think of a way that it could be wrong. And I just can't come up with anything that's satisfying. You know, because even the... Um, behind i think it was dumbledore's portrait there was like a hidden area mm -hmm. where the sword was it's like could there have been a wand back there could there be something else in dumbledore's office where you could hide a wand that dumbledore was just using his original wand and the elder wand was kept safe somehow maybe um but i think then as i'm rereading or the this next chapter about dumbledore and snape and these like some of these memories Dumbledore wanted Snape to be the one to kill him. And I, at first it was partially, he explains it as he didn't think Malfoy was ready. He didn't want his soul to be ripped mm -hmm. apart. Yep. Um, but there could have been ulterior motive to say Snape needs to be the one who has the Elder Wand. Um, and then if that's the case, I think it would be Voldemort's mm -hmm. at this point. Oh, because then it could have been Greyback or anyone else would, that would have worse. Well, yeah, he he said Greyback or Bellatrix. And if they found out that they had the wand, and yeah, yeah he, oh, he again he doesn't say anything about the wand in there. No, but I know, but I wonder if that's that could have been Dumbledore's plan. Thinking. And to be honest, it did make Dumbledore that's feel like kind of manipulative up. in these chapters. Um, yeah, we're gonna like talk about I was the next like, one, yeah. yikes! But I just. It also feels like Dumbledore knows way more than we ever gave him credit for. We just hoped he knew this much, and he still knew more than we ever imagined. And even in these chapters, we're like, he saw everything coming. So Yeah, but maybe he still doesn't fully understand the Elder Wand. Dumbledore? Like, yeah, like, does anyone actually understand it, especially mm -hmm. with that mm -hmm. kind of power? Or And Voldemort's, like, insane mind. <laughs> so, who... At this point, <clears throat> we are, I mean, you guys might not trust it, but we are led to believe that Voldemort is 100% the true owner of the Elder Wand because he killed Snape, who used to be the true owner of the right, Elder okay. Wand. Who killed yeah, Dumbledore, who used that. to be the true, true owner of the Elder Wand. Are there any other possibilities? Yeah, for sure. Because we don't know how it all works, but Draco could be the rightful owner. How? Because he did Expelliarmus. So he disarmed. So disarming? Is, in my mind, similar or actually defeating someone. So I thought, well, maybe. Maybe that was it. Um, and it's also, I'm just trying to think in the process, it doesn't feel as satisfying to me that Snape was the rightful owner of it, but was killed with it. Like, it, yeah. it just feels like he wasn't using the wand. He never actually took ownership of it so defeating him i when actually he, thought like the, with a the snake wand just would felt go weird back to, if it worked that way it like it would like, become neutral again it or wouldn't like, it wouldn't go against snape mm. like if he used that wand well and that's what i i had have to read it just again but like go to I don't Didn't know. I he, guess I'm thinking of it like a magnet. Like, nope, I'm not yeah. your owner. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, But yeah. I actually thought that's what Voldemort accounted for, and he didn't attack Snape directly. He released N Nagini, Nagini yeah. and uh, Nagini maybe he knows the attacking that. because point for why he didn't he did want to risk... The, oh. the wand might not be capable of that's defeating true, its owner. Yeah. That, that's why I thought he used Nagini um, instead. Because um, in the, in I'm the, surprised that Snape couldn't defeat Nagini. I know. It, I, in hindsight, now I'm like, yeah. wait, he couldn't see that coming. 
from Voldemort. He couldn't he prevent it. Processing he, he, everything because he never thought maybe Voldemort would kill he, him. But yeah. he didn't he's see a betrayal coming. I guess I it, it yeah. well, we didn't either, but it, it makes sense <laughs> now that he was looking for a way of making the Elder Wand work. And we love that it's not working, but that's the thing. Snape didn't realize it wasn't working. Um, maybe he thought... Do you even think he knew about it, though? I feel like that wasn't even in his realm. Mm. Did Snape actually know like mm. that Voldemort was on the hunt for the Elder Wand and that? Yeah, fair. Like, I feel like this Did he even know he went to Dumbledore's grave and took the wand? I don't know. He, he seems was busy. To. Be, how, he, how how does that the only yeah, thing that you get to in this chapter is that um, they're having the conversation Snape and, and uh, Voldemort are having the conversation about this wand so Snape at least knows at this point in this book we at least know that Snape knows that this is a powerful wand um, more powerful than other wands that he's a, his experience because he's like I thought for sure that this is going to be the one that, that could defeat power that, that could defeat uh, Harry but he, he's like, it's like any other wand. And Snape's like, no, you've done extraordinary magic with this wand. It's been great. And he's like, no, I've done normal magic, but yeah. I'm just an extraordinary wizard. But he's I'm like, just great. Yeah. yeah, he's a little uh, braggy guy. So Snape at least knows that it's somewhat powerful. Hmm. But then his, his, this is his logic. Let me read you the, uh, even just these two lines. Um, because this is one where you re- kind of read it back and you're like, oh, maybe that's why he needed to, why he said this. He says, my lord, the resistance, their resistance is crumbling. And it's doing so without your help, said Voldemort in his high, clear voice. Skilled wizard though you are, Severus, I do not think you will make much of a difference now. We are almost there, almost. Let me find the boy. Let me bring you Potter. I know I can find him, my lord, please. And now you read that line back and you're like, why did he say that? Because he probably wanted to give Harry the memories. Because of what Dumbledore told him. Because of what has happened in the next chapter. So, like, he doesn't want to go find him for anything for Voldemort's purposes. He right, wants to go get right. Harry so that he can deliver his memories to Harry. Because Dumbledore said moment. once Nagini is at safe at Voldemort's yep. side at all times, that's, when that's how you know it's safe to tell yeah. Harry yep. what and then happened. This is the next line where, like, Voldemort gives him the, all the information. And I love it, too, because you're, we were like... I'm, this chapter makes you pissed off at Voldemort for withholding the information for so long. He's like dangling this carrot in front of Snape for so long. And then finally he tells him, and he says, Snape did not speak. Perhaps you already know it. You are a clever man after all, Severus. You have been a good and faithful servant, and I regret what must happen. My lord, the Elder Wand cannot serve me properly, Severus, because I am not its true master. The Elder Wand, Elder Wand belongs to the wizard who killed its last owner. You killed Albus Dumbledore. While you live, Severus, the Elder Wand cannot truly be mine. My lord, Snape protested, raising his wand. It cannot be any other way, said Voldemort. I must master the wand, Severus. Master the wand, and I master Potter at last. And Voldemort swiped the air with his Elder Wand. It did nothing to Snape, who for a split second seemed to think that he had been reprieved. But then Voldemort's intention became clear, and the snake's cage was rolling through the air. And before Snape could do anything more than yell, it had encased him, head and shoulders, and Voldemort smoke and parcel tongue. Kill. So that's Voldemort's logic. Hmm. I think Snape, because Snape killed him, he own, he has his rightful owner, the Elder Wand. If he kills Snape, and you guys were even mentioning, like, maybe he doesn't want to use the wand. Even in the tale of the three brothers, the way that the guy won the wand from one of the brothers is he slit his throat. While he was sleeping. So maybe you can't really use the wand against the rightful owner. Yeah. But then that goes to the point. So if Voldemort knows this, then maybe that's why Snape is the true rightful owner of the Elder Wand because he was disarmed and he wasn't really using the wand against them. He he killed him without a yeah. wand, which which might make him yeah the Voldemort the rightful owner. And I guess there are enough open ends here that that could still be okay. I just but. still think of the when he when Voldemort goes to the prison where Grindle whatever where Grindelwald was (laughs) yeah (laughs) and he like he like laughed at him and said I never had it and I know that we just like assumed it's Dumbledore but I feel like there's another maybe there's like another path that the wand took yeah I don't know maybe no no agreed I would love to to, I'm just trying to see like 
But then Snape died. The for breadcrumbs. <laughs> yeah. Even though well, it's it seems like that anyway. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what's so funny uh, that at the moment we're like, yeah. oh yeah, nice. One less person. They you guys were like, each yeah. other. This is like, this is great. I know. I, I also thought that. Harry was going to jump out now that Nagini wasn't in the cage. I'm like, yeah. right now is perfect. No, Nagini still was in the cage. Was in the cage, but, but then Snape pulled Snape in. in. The case, and then they oh, went after the house, okay. Got so it wasn't actually a good time to attack. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just feels so strange. But I guess Harry doesn't want to reveal. Ew, I feel like that would have been perfect though, because Snape can help you defeat Voldemort. Voldemort doesn't have the Elder Wand power. <laughs> yeah, and, right? like it's, it's like, like a perfect, yeah, exactly. time. perfect, perfect the, storm. Go but ahead. if Nagini was still there, it wouldn't have made sense. And Harry didn't trust Snape at all. Obviously, at this point, I so know, neither did it, I. it would be like Even jumping out I while three thinking. of his like greatest enemies are there. Yeah. Um. So it just stinks again in hindsight that yeah. we're like. If they just communicated a little better, a little sooner. It is just so Ugh. good as far as a writing perspective is concerned, too, because you guys, as soon as Snape died, you're like, yeah, about time he gets his own. <laughs> and then the next line, he's like, he pulls Harry in and says, look at me. And you're like, what the heck is going on? I know. On? It's like, is he reading We're his mind? Is this something? dangerous? What are you doing? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> what is going on here? It's it's great writing. It's such great writing. Then Dumbledore Oof. really sucks because then he literally kept yep all Oof. secrets. No, because like he could You're have right. had Snape tell him sooner, and then they both could have went against Voldemort. Mm. And but no. Yeah, you're right. That was Dumbledore's then, idea. Great question. Or a great, great but point. why right then? Well, Dumbledore was trying to play it safe, and it still like well we'll get into it in the next chapter. You're saying you don't really trust Dumbledore's judgment. Dumbledore didn't trust Snape. He doesn't want all his secrets in one basket. Mm -hmm. So it's weird. But that's what also makes me think that he doesn't know everything. So like, does Harry? Yeah. Well, we're not in that chapter yet, but it's okay. Um, does Voldemort really regret this? Because that he was interesting too. He doesn't regret anything. What that's what I thought. About? He doesn't regret anything. Could he regret this? I only say that because regret is one of the things that can. Yeah, remorse, undo a horcrux true remorse, yeah. true remorse so then i was like does this have some kind of horcrux implication the true regret but interesting if you're saying you regret something while you're doing it it's just spoken regret he doesn't yeah, really but he regret didn't make it because he's literally with, doing it yeah, i really regret this boom but true remorse you wouldn't do the thing you could only what, experience that i thought after, it was only right? if you were making a horcrux yeah. After that kill, so it's not like he yeah. Made a so like the actual kill so even that if he made did the regret horcrux it, it doesn't mean that's it, yeah. It it's almost yeah. like remorse and regret for that maybe that specific person. Like he, maybe mm. after twenty years he could still feel remorse and regret for, but it has to be maybe the original victims of it or something like that. Right. What if right. it's Harry? <laughs> what? <laughs> like what if it's Harry? He feels remorse. Yeah. And regret. And then he's then he, undone by he that. He created his own monster, so yeah. maybe. So he might actually regret it and undo the scar, Horcrux. Well, Voldemort dun, still dun, doesn't dun. realize that, and that's why part of me thinks it can be the Elder Wand, because now he can use the undefeatable Elder Wand to defeat himself through Harry, kind of. Um, I feel like it's gonna backfire on him. <laughs> I just. Uh, I feel like there are still some missing pieces to this puzzle. Well, good thing there's a few chapters left. <laughs> good thing. <laughs> yeah. Because. Uh, let I feel you like I'm going to be annoyed. <laughs> well, you know what? It's also strange that Nagini left him alive. He said kill. Yeah. And Nagini waited long enough to have him basically be dead, but then moved on. And so it still is very fortunate for our purposes. Um,. And maybe Nagini waited till his heart was not beating and he literally only had 10 more seconds yeah. um, of oxygen in his brain and that he used to pull Harry in. Um, but it still felt like, you know, I'm just thinking of like the double tap technique. Mm. You just make sure in some <laughs> cases when you betray someone um, or in all zombie movies, you always double tap. <laughs> Um, I don't even but, know what that means. Oh, it's like when someone's down, you just one more yeah. bang one more for to make measure. sure. Oh, so there's no yeah. chance of, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know. I'm like, what is double tap? Um, and I'm glad he <laughs> didn't in this there. case because we get a lot of juicy information. I know. Um, if that didn't happen, we also now know Dumbledore's portrait has a lot of information. Yeah. 
So all the portraits seem to be gone. And that's the only issue. Yeah, I'm like, where are they? Because yeah. I want Harry to talk to that Dumbledore portrait and debrief and, and yell a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> destroy the office a little bit. Because uh, this is the last a little paragraph in the chapter, and it's great. It says, Harry took off the invisibility cloak and looked down upon the man he hated, whose widening black eyes found Harry as he tried to speak. Harry bent over him, and Snape, seizing the front of his robes, and pulled him close. A terrible, rasping, gurgling noise issued from Snape's throat. Take it. Take it. Something more than blood was leaking from Snape. Silvery blue, neither gas nor liquid. It gushed from his mouth and his ears and his eyes, and Harry knew what it was, but did not know what to do. A flask, conjured from thin air, was thrust into his shaking hands by Hermione. Harry lifted the silvery substance into it with his wand. When the flask was full to the brim and Snape looked as though there was no blood left in him, his grip on Harry's robe slackened. Look at me, he whispered. The green eyes found the black, but after a second, something in the depths of the dark pair seemed to vanish, leaving them fixed, blank, and empty. The man holding Harry thudded to the floor, and Snape moved no more. It's a great end to this chapter, because you're like, you have to keep reading. You're like, oh, what yeah. the heck is going on? Like, what so let's world? go to the next chapter, which is A Prince's Tale. Unless you have anything quick, Danny, in this this last this, uh, elder one? Uh, nope, that was it. All right. The, the Prince's Tale, which is really one of the best top three chapters. We're going to the top three chapters here. The first one of the three. It's great, but it's just the information download on Snape and what he was doing behind the scenes with Dumbledore and with Petunia and Lily and all this kind of stuff. But let's talk about this from the start. What do you think about the, the relationship? I mean, this is where we learned about Tonks and Lupin for sure. And this is kind of um, where you get like a little bit more of that information. But what do you think of the relationship, the initial memory between Snape, Lily and Toonie? That's like kind of cute when he's yeah. like the creepy nerd. <laughs> yeah. Toonie's a good uh, nickname. Yeah, Toonie's a great nickname. He's like actually pretty cute in the little picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think that's kind of weird to now wonder how different Snape became oh, yeah. through yeah. it all because... Oh, we see a, a different kind upbringing. of Snape here yes. where there's like a confidence to him. Harry said something like, uh, I don't know, like distinguished or something like that felt weird because it's not a word we would ever use to describe him. Um, so it just feels weird um, and kind of cool to see the history of him, but then sad to see what he mm -hmm. turned into. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to talk. We're going to have long discussions probably at another time for like, if Snape is good or bad, Ugh. Uh, lots of that's what I'm stuck that. questioning this whole yeah. time. Because he's he's a pretty reprehensible person, but is he on the good side or the bad side? That's always the question. But there's still a lot of debate in the Harry Potter world for whether his love was legitimate legitimate or not. We'll talk about that toward the end a bit. Hmm. But uh, it it the beginning of this it is just is interesting to see the difference. Like he has maybe some bias to him, but it's not maybe so ingrained in him yet. And he's trying to make his own decisions hmm. on things. He's still a little bit of a bully with Petunia, like the branch getting knocked down and like hitting Petunia. He still has this implicit thing in him, but yep. like Lily, his liking of Lily at this point is trying to like iron this out of him. Yeah, but as Kristen might dissect his <laughs> childhood, it sounds like he has like a terrible upbringing. Like his yes. parents are fighting all the time. Mm. And so I wonder if that played into his decision making also yeah Just yeah getting out of there's there's one line about uh james that you like love but you hate is that he looked like he came from a family that like truly doted on him and cared for him whereas yeah. snape you don't get that at all snape is wearing old baggy clothes like his mother looks stern like she doesn't even want to be there at the train mm -hmm. his dad's not really even in the picture but they're fighting all the time his dad doesn't even get to the train station snape is so excited to leave on the hogwarts express to get away from his family james is excited for a different reason that he can like fulfill his destiny or whatever like that but at the end of this chapter you kind of hate james and, and uh serious as well a little bit i know but you feel bad initially in this chapter for Snape because of his upbringing. He doesn't seem like he comes from a good place. He comes from Spinner's End, which seems like the ghetto of this little place. Like Petunia's like, oh, you're from that area? This sucks. And also, so. was that where we saw him make the unbreakable yeah. vow? Because, Spinner's End. Yeah. So then 
it's so that was his childhood home <laughs> probably <laughs> Well, because they operated to the river. Yeah. We saw the chapter yeah. was the you chapter just was details out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember we got the name of it or not, but because it was a, it was a unique chapter because that's the only other place we've seen Snape in a different location, yeah. pretty much. Like yeah, he was like at his home. We're like, didn't doesn't he live at Hogwarts? Is he like all the other? He professors? goes somewhere. Else. <laughs> yeah, and, he and it felt spot. like a weird place too. In general, we we were left like this is not normal. Mm. Um, and now I'm curious where. Lily and Petunia grew up. I think the the chapter left me with a lot of questions about the next generation too. Mm. And maybe it's Star Wars things or something. I just kept wondering if there's more connections here. And I feel like there has to be. But then I'm also like, or I can just get rid of that thought and she's left it quiet on purpose because we're supposed to focus on the people we know. <laughs> um, but I still am like looking for more because it feels like the motivations are still unclear. And and I'm I'm just like, Snape's dad, who is he? Why is he distant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then even like Harry talked about Lily saying goodbye to her parents, and he said her parents, not like my grandparents. Yeah. So he has no <laughs> knowledge of them. He You're doesn't recognize line, them. Yeah. I'm like, that's so weird. <laughs> he never even saw pictures. Petunia doesn't talk to them. Are they even alive? <laughs> Anyways. Um so <laughs> lots to think about this week. Um after recovering emotionally from reading it yeah. and reading it again today just to like dig into the details. Um, lots of weird little things like that. Yeah. So we'll keep reading and I have little notes on it, but no, it's good. And that's kind of what you feel. And one of the things that you're supposed to get in this chapter is just the comparison to childhood between all the characters essentially that mm. have lived a childhood. It's like one of the defining themes of this entire series is just the choice, the choices that you make to find who you are. And so, like, Harry grew up in in a similar situation to Snape, but he turned out in a different way. Hmm. Like, it's obviously different because Snape, you know, he was, you guys even mentioned his confidence. So, like, Snape was very proud of being a wizard to start. Harry didn't know he was one. So maybe Harry would have been, you know, like Lockhart if Hmm. he grew up in the wizarding world and was all sorts of, like, crazy like this. He would have been, like, the fame would have gotten to his his, uh, head. But... They're all they like even Voldemort, Voldemort, Ron, Harry, Hermione. Their upbringings are different, but it's really like the choices that they make after this that really define who they are. So, yeah, it's it's great. There's the one section in this chapter, in the beginning of this chapter. Sorry, motorcycles gone by, or loud cars. It's intense. Um, <laughs> what do you guys think about Petunia writing the letter to Dumbledore? Respect. <laughs> <laughs> that would be you guys. <laughs> Please let us in. Yeah. <laughs> I've already written my letter. It hasn't gotten there yet, unfortunately. But <laughs> I just it just was funny. Like they must have people in the post office. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm. And it just shows another side of Petunia, and then yeah. confirms more of the bitterness and where it came from. Yep. Because she wanted that. And then again, it even makes us feel bad when she's saying all these mean things on the platform nine and three quarters. It's it's just because she's jealous yep. and it's a coping mechanism. She's losing her best friend that she has already been slowly losing since Snape yeah. came into their lives. And so she resents all wizard kind because of it. And it, it does make sense and it is sad. Um, and then she's not able to mend the relationship at all. Hmm. But there's there's even this like this interesting, like again, she's an interesting character because in the... Uh, like maybe I think Petunia was doing the tiniest things imaginable to maybe try to mend the relationship. Like the one little note that we got in Lily's letter was like, mm. you know, Petunia sent me like what a horrible vase or something like that, some terrible present. Oh so yeah, like maybe yeah. Petunia was trying to do small little things to maybe yep. make small little bridges. But when they died, she just like firmed it up and she just hated wizards, and didn't want anything to do with them. Yeah, and not that it justifies anything that she's done, obviously. But you're like you understand her more. And mm. you know why she did the things that she did. It just makes her like almost more sad of a character, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is one of the next things that we got. And this was one of the questions that I kept asking you when we were at this chapter. But you remember Snape's worst memory of that chapter? Why was that his worst memory? Because Lily chose James over Snape. Yep. And... It- it was his it. fault. Yep. And he, so he, he knows that was the moment everything changed. Yeah. That's the moment he lost Lily too. Yeah. 
because right after that you get this whole the whole discussion on like uh them talking and lily essentially like leaves him like that's like the end of the their friendship really because mm-hmm. he just is going down this path that she can't follow and that's where he loses you lily think you would turn back mm. if you really cared for lily like how, how so turn back in what ways like, all right, all right, all right. I won't use dark magic. I'm mm. going to stick to, like, Hogwarts way. And Well, yeah. And that that's why we're left wondering, was he good or bad? Because he became a Death Eater. Well, because then you become bitter, maybe. I don't know. Mm. He's well, true. very self-serving. True. Yeah. yeah. It was about what he wanted. He was not ready to choose her. He probably didn't have choices when he was a kid, mm. either. Mm. So it's like, now I get to choose. Yeah. Like, um, And then maybe he was good at it, so... Yeah. Then you get recognized, and you're like, "Well, then I'm going to keep doing this." Yeah, mm-hmm. and then at a certain point, it's it's too hard to turn back if all of the people at school are like, "Why are you hanging out with Severus Snape? He's so lame. He's blah blah blah." And then the only people who don't judge you are the Slytherins. So then you're just kind of trapped there. But then that's where Dumbledore says how brave it is what Snape is doing, mm-hmm. and then says we sort too early. Which is nice <laughs> you sounded like one of the first. Yeah, podcasts, seriously, then. which is a great call. And now, but then we're like, wait, sort too early. Is does that mean Snape could have been Gryffindor? And if he was, because he's so brave, how would that have impacted his future and his friends? But and I mean, like I feel like getting outcome. sorted is not good because then they're like living up to whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Honestly, because you you become like the average of your 10 friends right isn't that what they say and if your 10 best friends are all slytherins i mean that's that's honestly what i was thinking with uh serious because when they're in the little training Mm. department and uh snape's like oh you have to be in slytherin and he says this to lily then james is like no way i would never want to be and snape uh, serious is over there going like everyone in my family is a slytherin Mm. and maybe that's the moment that Sirius goes from being a Slytherin to being a Gryffindor because his friend, that's the only person that he's probably met in the train so far, yeah, says Slytherin yeah. is terrible, and he's like, "Fine, like I'll go ahead and I'll be a Gryffindor now." Maybe the decision was right. made then and there. Right. I'm like, how many of these? This is probably this. Maybe the same for uh, Whoa, Harry. Maybe because he right. met Ron on the train. Like, I was thinking about this the entire chapter of like how in- influential the train is to being you being sorted it's who you meet on the yep, train that literally kind of determines how you get sorted and how houses. that person was raised yeah, to like seriously. or not like different <laughs> oh man yep <laughs> hey, but then how did snake know about slytherin it, we assume his, his mom parents. was yeah his mom yeah but i don't think it mentioned it specifically but he had positive mm. views about it mm. so hmm yeah, I, he at least knows the houses houses because of his mom. We don't know what house his mother was in, but we she probably because she's proud of being a wizard, um, probably told him about the Hogwarts and the houses. Snape seems to know all that information. Yeah, and he relishes information as well. Like he loves the idea of like having this information, and being able to present this to uh, Lily as like him super smart and like super picture. knowledgeable. And <laughs> sorry, I'm just admiring the picture again. It's a good picture. <laughs> it's a good picture. And like she, Lily looks. So cute. She actually reminds me of my niece. Oh, hmm. like yeah. This Lily's... innocent face of like finding out something. Yeah, Lily's great in this. I really am curious, and <laughs> kind of hoping we're gonna find out why Snape knew she was a wizard and was following them to begin with, because that is is part of this equation in a weird way. I'm pretty what sure attracted he Snape was to her to begin with? Escaping home and then just yeah. stumbled upon and just happened like, to see another wizard or something. I think maybe like just like a cute girl too. Like initially, I think it was just hmm. he was maybe just attracted to her or something like that. And then, and then, finds then all of a sudden, later. he's creeping in the bushes and sees her like you know do this something that's different. And he Snape's like, she's she's like a you know a wizard hmm. or a witch just like me. And then he's even more attracted to her. Then hmm. we are going to talk about whether this is actual love or not. <laughs> 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 that's a fascinating little discussion that is it is maybe the most divisive harry potter question in all of harry potter lore oh my. i'll try not to have any uh <laughs> firm opinions <laughs> yeah. about it that are weird <laughs> no it's great if you have them but hmm. um after the worst his worst memory this is when we get into a little bit more of the meat of the chapter with like not necessarily his background but his conversations that he has with dumbledore and this is one of the one that ones that we have um, after Snape says, you know, I will do anything uh, if you protect the sun. And 
it's later found out that Lily died because of this. Dumbledore then says to Snape, Her boy survives, said Dumbledore. With a tiny jerk of the head, Snape seemed to flick off an irksome fly. Her son lives. He has her eyes, precisely her eyes. You remember the shape and color of Lily Evans' eyes? <laughs> Wes, you that right? was Wes. <laughs> he just looked at me like this. <laughs> um, I you. Because you remember the shape and color of Lily, Oven- Lily Evans' eyes, I am sure. Don't, bellowed Snape. Gone, dead. Is this from Morse Severus? I wish, I wish I were dead. And what use would that be to anyone, said Dumbledore coldly. If you loved Lily Evans, if you truly loved her, then your way forward is clear. Snape seemed to peer through a haze of pain, and Dumbledore's words appeared to take a long time to reach him. What? What do you mean? You know how and why she died. Make sure it was not in vain. Help me protect Lily's son. He does not need protection. The Dark Lord is gone. The Dark Lord will return, and Harry Potter will be in terrible danger when he does. There was a long pause, and slowly Snape regained control of himself, mastered his own breathing. At last, he said, very well, very well. But never, never tell Dumbledore. This must be between us. Swear it. I cannot bear, especially Potter's son. I want your word. My word, Severus? That I shall never reveal the best to you? Dumbledore sighed, looking down into Snape's ferocious, anguished face. If you insist. So do you understand why Snape hated and yet protected Harry? Do you actually think that Snape really did protect Harry? Well, he definitely did with Quirrell, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So... There was that. Sometimes I was was thinking all week why he gave him detention so much, too. And I was like, did he actually like him? And he just wanted to spend time with him, but he can't make it seem mm. like he likes him. So <laughs> the tension is the only thing to be on one-on-one time. <laughs> it's a great point. That's it's, a little abusive, but it's a it's great point. It's just weird that he's not allowed to like him at all. I guess not in front of other Slytherins, but... It feels like he actually didn't like him very much. I no, I hate no. Yeah. It's like, like he hated him. Yeah. He hated James. Yeah. Well, that's what I was he like. like. He hated he him. He could see Lily, but then he acted like yeah. James. Yeah. So. Like these two things, that's why I, I think know. Snape is, again, When you, if you guys go through this series again, I don't think there's, a, like, there's huge debate on whether, on Snape's, like, ethics. But I think the one thing that is very, very true is that I think Snape is one of the more complex characters. Um, I, I, this is ridiculous for me to say this, but I think he's one of the most complex characters in all of literature, just like period. Mm. I think like how he acts, I, I don't know of another character that's really been written. I'm like, like you either kind of like characters or you don't. With Snape, it's so divisive and it's just so popular too. So it's a little different. But Snape seems to have both of these things in his mind at all times. He hates Harry at all times because Snape reminds Harry of everything that he hated about himself and everything that he hated about James Potter and all these other terrible things. It reminds of him, him of him losing Lily, of all that kind of stuff. But he also simultaneously loves Harry because he sees Lily in Harry and he loved, mm-hmm. he's, there's a huge debate about that, but he seemed to have loved Lily in some weird, perverted, twisted way. He seemed to have. Mm. So, like, he simultaneously loves and hates Harry, and that's how you kind of see him treating him this entire series with a lot of, you know, I mean, he's doing this to like an 11, 12, 13, 14-year-old boy, which is pretty terrible. Mm. But he also didn't have an example. Yeah, yeah. His parents. Yep, for sure. True, yeah. So... He sees a distant <laughs> what <does> father. That mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all looking at you, Kristen. Oh, Dissect boy. the psychology of this for us. <laughs> Maybe I can do it next week. <laughs> My brain is not fully there. I don't like him though. <laughs> um, Mulciber and Avery. Avery is a name I recognize. Mulciber is not. Yeah. So kind of a one-off. So we don't really see it. But Avery, was he bad, bad? Was he the one who worked at the ministry? And he was the executioner, I think. Was he the executioner of Buckbeak or the uh, going to be executioner of Buckbeak? Wait, Mulciber? No, Avery. Oh, hmm. 
It's possible, but I thought that was a more menacing name. The spreadsheet. Yeah, it's true. I (laughs) done a while. Um, Only because I'm trying to judge based off Snape's friends. She keeps bringing them up, saying they have a bad sense of humor. I was thinking Voldemort killed Avery. That was McNair. McNair. Oh, McNair. Yeah. And then I thought Avery was the one who said something about the ministry, and then they and or somebody was getting killed trying to get the weapon out of the ministry on his like orders and then he, Voldemort might have killed him I don't know but I'm still now I'm trying to make a case for Snape being good but he is choosing bad friends but at least they're not as bad as some mm. <laughs> Oof. he definitely so that that's why this is interesting because he goes down the path of being bad yeah but his his what some people call his love for Lily <clears throat> makes him recant that and go against Voldemort in the end. So he still is like, again, he's a death eater. He's like really uh, like a pretty nasty person. Yeah. Um, using pretty like dark magic against people. Yeah. But on the end of this, he makes a decision to become a spy against Voldemort because of his intrigue. I'll say intrigue for Lily. Hmm. So all these other all these other people like Avery like all these other interesting characters that come up they're not necessarily the most vital. It's just like he is Snape is, seems to be almost a ringleader with these two guys and like his little posse yeah, and yeah. they all three of them go and become End death eaters. Being death eaters, yeah. Like, so it's like confirming he really is people's I mean, bad. like he was a leader. That's all he wanted, don't mm. you think? He wanted to be popular and those guys made him I don't hmm I don't think of it as him also, wanting to be popular. Also, it's like but if Lily, if your best friend goes against you, let's say, like, like we'll start with like best friends, right? Lily yeah. and Snape. Because they both called themselves that. Yeah, and then all of a sudden she wants nothing to do with you. You can yeah. like react to it. Right, right, and then go the opposite way. Hmm. But and then you start getting a following you're like well i'll just continue this I have <laughs> right new friends now well yeah and it sounds yeah. like he just didn't have many friends if they kind of knew about him even when they were 11 and they didn't seem to have the best opinion yeah. of him <laughs> it feels like he's been kind of struggling for friendship for a long time um i know i feel for him. so at least he had brotherhood in the slytherins but it just took him down like a terrible path mm. um but then it's like all right if if, Vol- if the prophecy wasn't about Lily Potter, would he have stopped to try to stop it? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, and then what would have happened? Wait, it, I forget what determined it was either Neville or Harry. And Voldemort, Voldemort marked that. it, marked Harry by assuming it was Harry. And then... It was Harry's half-bloodedness. Neville oh. was a pure-blood, Harry was a half-blood. And mm. it was the one that Dumb- or was the one that Voldemort marked... And that was the one that was going to be his equal. And so mm. the, when Voldemort goes after Harry because he sees Harry in him being a half-blood, yep. Harry was then the chosen one. And hmm. if it was Neville, if Voldemort marked Neville and then it went the other way, would Snape have just been bad and his right-hand man forever and then everything would have gone down normal? And like... Well, maybe because you do get... I mean, like, it would have been a completely drastically different series, but you still got the moment where... Uh, so maybe James and Lily would have been tortured into insanity after that. Hmm. Um, hmm. So it, the story might have just oh, been a little right, bit different. Right. So Snape might have still tried to protect Lily and James. Really, just Lily uh, might have tried to protect her, but it would it would have just been a drastically different story. But you're right because it would have happened later down yeah. the line. So yeah, you're right. It, it's not like they would ever get a happily yeah. ever after. Um, hmm. I loved when Dumbledore showed up to Snape when he first like, yeah. uh, like you <laughs> was turning me. and he shows up like lightning yeah. and the wind. I feel like that kind of power we never really saw from Dumbledore. We just got glimpses of it. Yeah. So then to see it in this moment was like, oh man, that was scary. Yeah. That was cool. he, it's like Dumbledore in his prime. Yeah. Like a good, he's so good. Like Snape does. was terrified. His yeah. wand was out of his hand before he even realized what was happening. Yeah. yeah it is a like cool moment. Um, this is the conversation that he has with Snape. Uh, D- Snape and Dumbledore have a little later. It says, Snape raised his eyebrows and his tone was sardonic as he asked, are you intending to let him kill you? Certainly not. You must kill me. 
There was a long silence, broken only by an odd clicking noise. Fox the phoenix was gnawing a bit of cuttlebone. Would you like me to do it now? asked Snape, his voice heavy with irony. Or would you like a few moments to compose an epitaph? Oh, not quite, said Dumbledore, smiling. I dare say the moment will present itself in due course. Given what has happened tonight, he indicated his withered hand. We can be sure that it will happen within a year. If you don't mind dying, said Snape roughly, why not let Draco do it? That boy's soul is not yet so damaged, said Dumbledore. I would not have it ripped apart on my account. And my soul, Dumbledore? Mine? You alone know whether it will harm your soul to help an old man avoid pain and humiliation, said Dumbledore. So this is kind of like the idea of... Do, do we understand now why Snape was the one that killed Dumbledore? Uh, partly. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't know the uh, the Elder Wand element, if yeah. that was part of it. Yep. But we know that it was to protect Draco. And knowing that because Snape and knows the real Dumbledore. reason, it even protects Snape a little bit. Yeah. And potentially passes the Elder Wand along to somebody. So Dumbledore, yeah. And again, Dumbledore could have been doing this manipulatively. So Snape, the Elder One, falls into Snape's hands. Which right, just all part target, of the plan, exactly. By not even telling Snape, setting him up as bait. And potentially even thinking that Snape would always be the rightful owner and then also never get killed so that Voldemort would never reach the full power. Um, so I don't know, it, it could have been one of those. Yeah, Yeah, he's leaving out details again, though. Classic Dumbledore. <laughs> um, he doesn't tell anybody anything, it's ridiculous. I'm curious. Um, Can't have too many eggs when, in one basket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When Dumbledore destroyed the ring, they're talking about it a little bit, and Snape was curious why. Dumbledore said, I was a fool, sorely tempted. And Snape says, tempted by what? And that's my question, too. So Dumbledore did not answer. Like, what was he tempted by? Yeah, that's a good question. Tempted by... Yeah, but because it's a spirit in there, so maybe instead of it, remember when Her uh, Ron was trying to kill or stab the locket? Oh, so you think this was another kind of spirit giving Dumbledore some options? Yeah, because yeah. hmm. they it plays off of half what of my kingdom can be yours. Your like mm. what? Yeah, what would the ring have done to tempt him? Well, I mean, he's not tempted by much, so I, I don't know. Must have been juicy. What did like Dumbledore Lord of the see? Rings. <laughs> what did mm. he see in the mirror of Arisid? Socks. Oh, so he could go back to see Ariana. He could go back to something like that. He was going to give him socks. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there could be any connection, anything more that the ring could actually give him. Or I, I guess my first it. instinct was that it could confirm some of the theory that... Um, well, if the ring had more power to it, but no, uh, I just, I just think just it know. taps into whatever your either fear or your wants are. Yeah, yeah, it could have just been that exactly. Just allows you to, hmm, because Ron's fear was that Harry and Hermione were getting together. Yeah, yeah, it's intense. Um, um, there hmm. is there is kind of a theory that each of the objects. Did, would do something different to you to hmm. torture you. So some hmm. people say that if they actually had the diadem in their possession for a longer period of time and they put it on, it really would have like psychologically messed with you. Some people said if you drank from the cup, mm. it would have done something completely different to you. But they all maybe have some kind of weird elements to you, which is why Dumbledore, when he puts on the ring rather than puts on the locket, you know, the locket like really makes you grumpy. And when you open it, it it's specifically targeted for that person. So... It might have just been the Horcrux itself when he puts on the ring and that like that itself was cursed. But why did he really even put on the ring? Like, what is it about the ring? Is there any specific part of the ring that he was like, why would you put on a hor Horcrux like that? Like, what is tempting hmm. him to do that rather than just destroying it, which they destroy the cup yeah. and the, the, the item like that? I thought he destroyed it and then put it on. But I guess no, because I think the curse, like the blackened hand, came from him putting it on while it still had power. Mm. So if it was the resurrection stone and there was a temptation along those lines, I'm even well. It's our, of course, every episode we must reference <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Um, it's just like the ring. There's like the temptation to put it on or just to see what it does. Try me, see how good it is. Ooh. And then he he gets to like 
see, but it was a trap. Or I'm thinking of the way Harry talked about the Dementors when Luna and Neville came to save the day. Yes. Um, when Harry at some point loses so much hope, he almost welcomes letting it all end because he, he yeah. reaches that point of just like, at least it'll all be over. Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like when you're in some of those weird things that mess with your mind, you lose all perspective. And maybe that's part of like the depression thing she's been referencing through Dementors. But then what if uh, Dumbledore experienced something like that with this ring of just this temptation that clouds his judgment entirely of just, just put it on. All your problems go away if you put mm. this ring on. Um, but really it bring takes over his whole body well, and does it's something. Maybe though. Maybe it's like part Horcrux, part sort the stone. Mm-hmm. And it said like, you can, if you put this on, you could bring someone yeah. back to life. Yeah, Ariana could be here again. You could, yeah, you could bring back um, Ariana, yeah. And his mother, With maybe. her wool socks. Yeah. Um, yeah, it could be. And so he got tempted to, to put it on, and then it was kind of a trap, and it was his undoing, and kind of terrible. Um, hmm. Which stinks. Terrible way for Dumbledore to go. <laughs> yeah. So I keep hoping there's, like, another layer to it. Or it's just telling that even as powerful as he was, he could be tempted because... Anyone can be tempted, and he had to deal with the consequences. Yeah, for sure. Or did he know Snape wouldn't kill him unless he had a certain death already, so he had to infect himself um, to make it easier for him? That would be the ultimate sacrifice, actually. (laughs) Um, Dumbledore does know a lot, Um, and we still don't know how he knows everything. Yeah. But if he saw everything going down as it was, and he knew he had to ask Snape to kill him. He would also probably know Snape wouldn't be willing unless he was already dead. Like, you know. Like so, dying. actually, I like that. I'm going to think about that from now on, unless the book gives us reason otherwise. Because <laughs> that, that's another more, like, noble way that Dumbledore is, is saying it has to go down this way. Um, and that was his way of initiating it. And maybe he even accomplished something with his temptation before uh, it all went south. Mm. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting why he put that on. You have, like, we'll, we'll, we'll learn about the reasons why in a few. Um, <laughs> in but a few years. In a few years. <laughs> we'll discuss this. <laughs> a few more years of this podcast, guys. And we'll Man, those poor them. Chudley cannons. They I know. They have run to every <laughs> joke. I know. <laughs> um, there is another line here. That is one of the most important of this entire chapter. Is, Harry must not know, not until the last moment, not until it is necessary. Otherwise, how could he have the strength to do what he must, what must be done? Tell him what? Dumbledore took a deep breath and closed his eyes. Tell him that on the night Lord Voldemort tried to kill him, when Lily cast her own life between them as a shield, the killing curse rebounded upon Lord Voldemort and a fragment of Voldemort's sword soul was blasted apart from the hole and latched itself onto the only living thing left in that collapsing building part of lord voldemort lives inside harry and it is that which gives him the power of speech with snakes and a connection with lord voldemort's mind that he has never understood and while that fragment of soul unmissed by voldemort remains attached to and protected by harry lord voldemort cannot die What does that mean? You said it's a Harry Crux <laughs> during the library. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, oh, goodness. Well, what Jen was saying in the car, um, what was it? Something about nobody really understands well, yeah. how this stuff works because it's ancient magic. Mm. We'll get my ancient magic thing. Of course, of course. <laughs> you but I feel like Dumbledore fun. still doesn't know the full thing because he just says, oh, it's like, it's called this, but like I don't really know how it works, right? With the the two wands with the double core when mm-hmm. all those people came out, like he could explain it, but oh, like, like Priori and Cantatum actually happening was yeah. different than what Dumbledore yeah. thought. He just knew the concepts. Yeah. So you think it's the so same thing with the wands? Maybe. I think potentially. Or with the Horcrux, I mean. With the Horcrux, yeah. Well, I, I've toyed with the. Few yeah, I hope so. Where it was like, well, maybe. I also said that everyone's dying for the <laughs> the good of the wizarding world and the muggle world, which is also protecting 
Harry, I feel like. Mm. Like, everyone's kind of dying for Harry to, like, go up against Voldemort to, like, defeat him. So I feel like maybe potentially all that love and the ancient magic spells that could go along with Mm. it are protecting him. So even if Voldemort tries to kill him, he maybe can't. Hmm. Or I've also said the other thing with the wand. Yeah, and and I guess it's it, it's uh, is this Horcrux forward? Like if if Voldemort is attacking him with the 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 death blow, d- does he hit him in the forehead with it, and then Horcrux <laughs> is gone, and he he did defeat Harry, but he defeated the more powerful entity because we've seen things like that too. There's like a little bit of, you know, Where power. Where have you seen that before? Well, I guess I'm thinking of, uh, <laughs> you guys, this is a that lot of wishful energy. thinking. Yeah, they, literally, that's what it is because I'm like, it feels like Harry can't die and it also feels like Snape needed to know that somehow because this by the end, it wasn't, it was satisfying for so much but in the second read, I'm like, Snape's right. And this feels like Dumbledore just yep. manipulated everybody. And yep. and Dumbledore's like, yeah, I did lead you to believe that Harry was going to be fine for this whole time yeah. for however many years. Um, but he's going to die. And and he didn't say that. So I'm like, I just refuse to think that Dumbledore was manipulative. And I keep hoping we're going to find out even more about a conversation between Snape and Dumbledore or Dumbledore and others. Um, because... It just leaves me wanting a little bit more. But that takes away something. the manipulation. What? What I say? You, in the car that you said, well, maybe Dumbledore is saying all these things because Harry has to believe he's sacrificing. Oh yes, it has himself. to be a willing sacrifice. But he's act so uh, he's making everyone believe this, but it's not actually. Ooh, yeah, true. I like that theory. That's good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I forgot about I that one about because that. The, well, only because uh, it's more manipulation, which stinks. Yeah. But if that were the case, it. It's another holding on to a hope that it's not about actually dying, but about Harry needs to believe he's dying and be willing to do it in order to protect the people that he loves. So he walks into this Voldemort situation. <laughs> more of a love. He's the love ancient. shield for all his peeps. But then he has to die. Yeah. Maybe not. But at least everyone else. <laughs> wait, really? So well, no, oh, I, oh, also, yeah, yeah. I also Time had up. a theory about the Elder One because I thought... If he's, let's say this is the Elder One and he's using it against someone, but what if the someone is part him? Would it actually Interesting. defeat that person? Yeah. Would it, it backfire? It can't That's lose. That's why I was like, I feel like it won't work. Harry's got Love Shield and Valdi Shield. So, and let me Horcrux get this Shield. Double if he's a Horcrux, you oh, can't kill a Horcrux whammy. without the Gryffindor sword. But it's this Does is like Harry the ring of power though. Again, this is like it has to be destroyed or it was made. Like Voldemort mm. has to be the like Dumbledore makes that very clear. Voldemort has to be the one that destroys or that kills Harry. But what if everything else is defeated except Harry and the Horcrux in him? <laughs> well, that's what I'm kind of saying. Imagine like how can the, I don't get how that. could Voldemort kill Harry? Or if he or just the opposite of what we're hoping happen, where. Harry dies and the Horcrux doesn't die. No, no, Harry defeats Harry, Voldemort. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, Harry wins. Voldemort dies. Everyone's happy. I this, forgot. And then his um, no, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> what if Horcrux? He just points. At because what we have found is wands can't kill Horcruxes. So unless it's the Sword of Gryffindor or um, oh, a Fang so of a Basilisk, means... how can Harry's scar die? Okay. How there's, do you cut the... There's two suggestions that you can have for that. This is the Elder Wand. Can the Elder Wand destroy a Horcrux? Right. Or can the owner of a Horcrux itself. destroy his own Horcrux with his wand? Ooh, that's interesting. Because maybe Voldemort is able to destroy Harry. Yeah, definitely could be true. Because um, Snape, in the ne- one of the next lines of this chapter, it says, Snape goes, so the boy, the boy must die, asked Snape quite calmly. And Voldemort himself must do it, Severus. That is essential. Another long silence. Then Snape said... I thought all these years that we were protecting him for her, for Lily. Mm -hmm. We have protected him because it has been essential to teach him, to raise him, to let him try his strength, said Dumbledore, his eyes still tight shut. Meanwhile, the connection between them grows even stronger, a parasitic growth. Sometimes I have thought 
he suspects himself. If I know him, he will have arranged matters so that when he does set out to meet his death, it will truly mean the end of Voldemort. Dumbledore opened his eyes. Snape looked horrified. You have kept him alive so that he can die at the right moment? Don't be shocked, Severus. How many men and women have you watched die? Oh, so cold. I know. Lately, only those whom I could not save, said Snape. He stood up. You've used me. Meaning? I have spied for you and lied for you, put myself in mortal danger for you. Everything was supposed to be to keep Lily Potter's son safe. Now you tell me you've been raising him like a pig for slaughter? But this is touching, Severus, said Dumbledore seriously. Have you grown to care for the boy after all? For him? shouted Snape. Expecto Patronum. From the tip of his wand burst the silver dough. She landed on the office floor, bounded across the office, and soared out of the window. Dumbledore watched her fly away. And as her silvery glow faded, he turned back to Snape and his eyes were full of tears. After all this time? Always, said Snape. (laughs) (laughs) It can't just be for Snape, though. Okay. Wait, what? I'm just saying, never mind. (laughs) What are you saying? What I'm saying is that always can't just be like Snape's love for Harry and Lily. For Lily. Because he says for him, question mark, meaning like, no, it's not for him. It's for Lily, right? But there's more juice to this. <laughs> we just don't get it. Yeah, and I want someone to explain it to us. All I'm saying is because everyone uses this for wedding decorations. I'm like, it can't be this. And I don't know what it is, but I know that I do this Snape toot thing my own horn cannot for be this. A quick second. And the, <laughs> the first time I asked you this question, guys, the way I asked you this, I said, there is a word that Harry Potter fans always, 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 That's always hilarious. Wait, but remember. I said it. I know, and I gaslit you into not believing Wow, like, that's so great. <laughs> Jen, yeah, Jen, you had that one point so in the podcast annoying. where you're like, everyone writes it on like weddings and stuff like that. And she's like, it has to be always. And I'm like, I don't think so. It's definitely not that. So <laughs> that is annoying. great. Wow, I wonder how many more of those little gems you hit throughout uh, the There's podcast. a lot of them. He's always there. annoying. <laughs> always. <laughs> but there's, <laughs> yeah. there's uh, this is this is essentially your guys' theory. I want to confirm this right now. Hmm. You think that, um, that Snape, or you think that Voldemort is going to kill Harry, but there might not, Harry might not die because Snape is killing something, like the Horcrux is the first thing that he kills. And then all of a sudden Harry, he because he dies willingly, or dies willingly, whatever that looks like, he then casts the protection over everyone else in the castle. Um, hmm. I like that. Something like that, I guess... I was almost feeling, hoping there'd be something more about um, protection when you die willingly for the right reasons. There's a nobility to it. Um, uh, but yeah, or I'm thinking Harry already has enough charms of protection for the people who have died for him, like Lupin and Tonks yeah. and Moody yeah, and saying, Fred. Everyone. And like, so I'm feeling like Harry has a lot of protection. And so if Voldemort is attacking and he harry harry's soul that's another confusing part soul and mind are one in the same does that mean anything then like (laughs) harry's soul is protected but voldemort's is not protected by that same love so then voldemort only kills himself and harry is protected Mm. but i'm not so sure according to that theory it wouldn't matter as much if harry goes willingly or not but maybe that's all Dumbledore knew at the time. Mm. Um, but it, he made it like that's what makes me think now even more so because he said uh, he has to go and um, Voldemort has to be the one to kill him. Yeah, but that's weird too. Why no, does I, Voldemort have to be the one? No, because he needs to try to kill himself. And so and only Voldemort can kill the the Horcrux, the Harry Crux, without. It's, like, because you can't stab Harry in the forehead with the basilisk. Yeah, like, I feel like the only way for <laughs> it to you. leave Harry is to have Voldemort, like, himself yeah. attack. It, that does make sense. But then why couldn't he say it differently? He couldn't say Harry needs to fight Voldemort and take a big hit or something? Oh, okay, yeah. So he's still not talking about Horcruxes with Snape. 
He's implying mm. somehow that Harry is has part of his soul, but he's not saying that he's part Horcrux too. Right, right. So he's still keeping that from Snape. And then, well, I still don't fully get why, but he couldn't just say Harry has to fight Voldemort and then let it happen how it happens. And then what's Harry supposed to do? Go out there like with his hands behind his back? Mm -hmm. You know, like, all right, it's time. Get me. Like, it just feels weird. Like, what's Harry supposed to do with this information? But I want, Go out, but kill I, Nagini with one hit, and then you like... You don't think Dumbledore is saying these things? Like, setting it up for like a more dramatic story to get more of a reaction? From Snape? Like, so... From Snape and then from Harry. Wait, what do you mean from Harry? Like, I think Dumbledore was never planning on telling him this stuff. It was like Snape was supposed to tell him these things. Mm. That's what it feels so, like. So... Mm. Dumbledore was telling all of this to Snape, hoping Snape would pass this along to Harry. Yeah, and like that, the like you have to die. The... But even that feels weird That's because how would that come up. from Snape? Then like Harry's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, Snape, I hate you. You hate me. Sounds like a great idea. I'm just gonna go to your boss and let him kill me. Cool, <laughs> yeah. good plan." Like I just feel like that's so weird. Like how would Snape even prove that he was like on Harry's side, and then just be like, "Yeah, you gotta go kill yourself." Well, like now. the. What he actually did was with the pensive. Fair, if you can read stuff. minds. But but Snape's so good at that. If he wasn't doing this on his dying breath, I don't think Harry would have believed it. Mm -hmm. And and Dumbledore even warned him that when, or Dumbledore's portrait warned him when he was going to bring them the sword. Like, he's like, yeah, they still might be mad about the George thing. So just like, don't, don't, you know, be careful out but there. But then that's another whole thing is if he saw his Patronus, like, here, I could prove it to you and look it's oh, a true. silver dough. And yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I helped you back then. The... But it's still, uh, yeah, th that would help for sure. It would still be potentially. Weird, I don't know. I feel but... like Dumbledore is saying these things, but it's not actually true. Like, I think he's just setting up for like another story. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I just can't figure out what, what it is. Like, what would the thing be? What, what just are these I wanted to pieces? believe Snape was good. And you want to continue to trust Dumbledore. <laughs> that was right. Dumbledore has <laughs> a plan in this. I just can't figure out what the plan is. What's the close? When does it open? What's inside? Forgot about that. And how does that help us in this situation? <laughs> I just... I just feel uh. like the fact that he's saying, like, Voldemort needs to kill him. And he needs to know. Like, that just seems really important. Yeah, you have to tell him this when it's all... Well, it's also weird because even if Harry didn't talk to Snape about this, wouldn't that be the end result anyway? Hmm. It's exactly what Voldemort was saying in the last chapter. Um, it seems like he knows Harry better than anyone. He's like, yeah, Harry's coming to us. Don't you worry. He'll be here. Um, and I feel like the same thing would happen whether he knew this from Snape or not. He would try to kill Nagini and then fight Voldemort. Hmm. And he only has an hour to decide anyway. So in my mind, at the end of that hour, he's fighting Voldemort one way or another. And regardless of what he heard from Snape or Dumbledore or anyone else, he's on this mission. Um but is he going to go out there and willingly die? That's the part that's weird. And it, it's the only thing that I think Snape's story says that changes the action. What? It's like he's not even going to put up a fight? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's too weird. No, or maybe that would throw Voldemort off so much. He'd be like, what's he doing? Is this a trap? It just feels huh. weird. I don't know. Uh, or maybe you have to put up a fight just to keep it going for a little. <laughs> um I didn't think that way. I keep thinking that he's like fighting him. Hmm. I would still want to fight even hmm. if I had to die. But like, this is for this. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> then you're fighting that. with no risk. You're like, ha ha, at least I can yeah. poke him a few times before yeah. it's all over. Um, so, I mean, we could ask this at the right end, but we'll ask it now. What is Harry going to do after this chapter? He's like, going to fight Voldemort. Do you think, He's how going. can he separate Nagini from Voldemort? Do you think that all happens at once? I feel like maybe Ron and Hermione can take care of wow. Nagini. So I do kind of like that, but afar, I still don't know how. And then he takes care of Voldemort. So he's going to go with... Um, I really can't picture them leaving him, even though if uh, he right. I can't picture it at all. They're like, we're going with you. 
But then Harry's then like going to explain to them that, yeah, yeah but, I have to die, though. But maybe so. that's why he wanted the three of them together. He's like, you could tell Ron and Hermione. Maybe this was all part of the plan. Because they all need to know about it. Mm. Well, hmm. It just seems pretty risky. And then... And then if Ron and Hermione die protecting Harry, what happens? <laughs> Another child. <charm. laughs> it feels like the kind of thing he... I was going to say has to go do it alone, but you're right. Dumbledore wanted them to be together and has kept them together this whole time. Right. And that's why I don't Even fully believe end. that he's like a pig going to the slaughterhouse. I feel like these are just words to... You think there's more? There better be more. I mean, I'm sure there is. I, yeah. I mean, we got a couple chapters, but I just don't know what it would be. And then your, your opinion how of the Dumbledore dynamic shifts is very um, decreased in this because you just yeah. you feel so icky after this. You're like he was just manipulating everything. Even what did how like when did Dumbledore know about all this that he was he was keep, yeah was he keeping Harry alive for this long specifically so that he could just wait till he would he could just you know get older and then Voldemort could kill him then. Like, because was he really raising it for a piggy for slaughter or was there any kind of like love or like, right. Like, but when Harry questioned that to stuff. Dumbledore, Dumbledore was very like, his response was calming. Mm. I forget when it was. It might've been book four or something. <laughs> Cause he could like, be a master manipulator. Well, yeah, fair. Um, it is. I don't want to think of Dumbledore with that way. And I'm holding out hope that there's a good reason but if we don't get a good reason, this chapter left me with icky feelings towards Dumbledore and Snape. It was better feelings because this was a big step up compared to what Snape was feeling. Um, but a big step down for Dumbledore of like manipulation. Mm. So I just want a little more because I still have that hope that Dumbledore, there's more to this. And it was all for... Harry's good. It can't be for Harry's good. Ugh, but here's good. here's the Ugh. issue though. If there's more to this, when does he find out there's more to this? I know. What like the portrait? Yeah. Like what's gonna give him? But the portrait's gone. No one's in the portrait right now. Yeah. I guess I'm hoping there's still somewhere else. But yeah, maybe it comes back or something. I, I, yeah. I don't know where he would, but it could be a good old fashioned letter. You know, it could yeah. be something else. Um, I open at the close could be a note from Dumbledore, you know, mm. it might not be something dramatic to end the, um, you know, a battle, but it could be just something to, to conclude the relationship or something more like a, another piece of the story or mm. something from Dumbledore to Harry. I don't know. Um, but in my mind, there is still hope that it was not manipulation but maybe we don't have enough pieces or but I just can't see any connection. just been saying stuff so that way in case Voldemort was reading his mind. Like Oh, true. Try, Dumbledore yeah. like, did say that about Snape. I keep thinking of these conversations as like as though Voldemort can read their mind. So like He did say that. Yeah, you're right. He might just be saying it so that way. That's a great point. Voldemort thinks it'll be easy or like or yeah, but then what is Harry? But then I think also Dumbledore know, knows Harry and like, would he just sacrifice himself? He would probably fight. And then that's w of actually what he wants mm. because he wants, he knows that Harry will protect till the death, but he's yeah. not going to go down like not fighting. Right. Because that's in Harry's blood. He yeah, He's not going to go down not fighting. But will he? Will he just go down? Like, again, it talks about this idea of, of being willing to go down. That would be growth for Harry. We've yeah. never seen him quite like that. Yeah. And he is starting to take Dumbledore's word more and more. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't need a wand. Yeah, I guess not. I really think Voldemort's going to kill himself instead of killing Harry accidentally. So you think Harry's going to die? No. Just Voldemort is going to kill his scar. Just Voldemort's going to kill him. Okay, He's going to de Horcrux himself. Interesting. Or we also talked about does Harry die and then Voldemort dies and then Harry gets resurrected with the, the stone. Yeah, like the. Uh, and that seems like not a the real Aslan way of moment. coming back. Yeah. So that's why I don't believe it. Yeah, again, we. 
there are missing pieces to make that happen. Or Unless the resurrection Harry stone is in the die? snitch. I can't or, picture him Yeah, and, and that's why it just feels weird how <laughs> we just we want a happy ending so bad that we're like anything is possible in the Whatever. winning world. Some he can't of my be dead. Coming true, so now I'm well, yeah, but the problem is <laughs> I've been saying from the ending. very beginning he might have to die right. because it's a it it makes sense for the story arc. Yeah, and and then that's a fair conclusion to the yeah, book. But then I just I don't like... like it. And there are ways it doesn't have to happen somewhere in this wizarding know, world. I, I just don't know how. This always word is something more. Than what was well, just said. I, so like it, like he was always going to live because of love, or something like that. Oh, Harry. Yeah. So like this always thing. It's like actually always he was always going to survive this, and he was always going to defeat Voldemort because of the love. I. And then that would make more sense as to why they're using weddings. <laughs> <laughs> that's your, your your primary clue yeah i mean yep. i also am wondering what dumbledore meant behind the phrase after all this time the initial read was oh you still love lily after all this time but why did his patronus tell dumbledore that because lily's patronus was a doe and his changed it dough. changed to the dough. So we know hers was the dough. Wait, mm-hmm. what? I didn't know this. Because that's yeah. uh, this is mimicking what happened oh, to yeah, Tonks yeah, with yeah, Lupin. Yeah. yeah. And so it confirms kind of the theory that so she Lupin's was Patronus was the same stag. as his anime. <laughs> <know that? laughs> you were right. So that's another thing that you nailed. Because you were like, my top two are maybe that it's Lily and Snape. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you were great. right on both. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> so Dumbledore is saying, after all so this annoying. time... So that's so proof he, that Harry's not dying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jen's on a roll right now. She's really confident in her answers. All right, because good. I hope so. That, <laughs> yeah. that is how Dumbledore. Well, that's why Dumbledore says after all this time because he knew out his Patronus, that was it's proof a doe. that he still loved Lily. That was proof that he still uh, loved Lily. Wait, so what was Snape's Patronus before? A bat? That's a good question. It might have been a bat. That would make sense. Um. What the heck? How did I miss that? That wasn't actually said. You just told us this. Well, oh, that Lily's uh, Patronus was the dough. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that was said. Um, but it was definitely implied right here. That's why I'm saying it. Because that told Dumbledore. Whatever. He said, Detective. after all this time. Meaning, like, Dumbled- that confirmed to Dumbledore, you still love and Lily. And to you. And to me. Um, but, <laughs> I, again, it was such a whirlwind in the live read. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, um, I went back and read it and still didn't get it like you did. Um, but that's why I was saying there's something more to that. That meant something to Dumbledore. That's what I wrote here. Um, so that's proof he was still in love with Lily. I just oh, don't know it's like it always so like you... You're always in love and you're always going to take... Which maybe isn't the most healthy. But yeah, yeah. I think that would show the love. So is that the wedding stuff? I can't. I I have to figure it out. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Do you guys have any other questions in this chapter? I'm sure you have a ton and you just want to try to figure stuff out. Yeah, that's Mm. basically it. Oh, but Tilda Bagshot says that he was, but it seems incredible that Dumbledore could ever have been friends yeah. with Gellert Grindelwald. The little letter. You know what? Like, so you guys had a question about that. What was the, like the beginning part of the letter? Yeah. Well, why did Snape keep that? Because of Lily's signature. Yeah. Or, it's yeah. with love or lots of love. <laughs> so, I mean, this is... Unless close. it was also his father's name. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my little theories today as I was reading because his dad... Mm, feels like it means something. He doesn't care about anything. Huh. Interesting. But who doesn't care about anything? And Grindelwald cares about stuff. I maybe. thought you said he... What? what? Maybe it means nothing, but maybe it means something. Not into women. Oh, Grindelwald? That came out after the books. Yeah, it was after the books. And it feels like she might have been making it up. And also, he might have just been bi. <laughs> so... <laughs> Maybe after his whole thing with Dumbledore, um, he got a little wild in college. And then 
he settles down with a nice woman to raise a not so nice son. <laughs> um, but I, I think I'm trying to think of people who could be his father. And so I'm like, I'm thinking of people like Nicholas Flamel, where I'm like, well, he's an alchemist, but he doesn't care about anything. Is this because Maybe he's already like Nicholas Flamel? Everyone's a child of Nicholas Flamel in this whole series. <laughs> Nicholas Flamel <laughs> yeah, is 900 and something years old. Of kids. <laughs> so I'm just trying to think of people that could be his dad, time. and there aren't a lot of options. Ah, oh, but he was blonde. Shoot. I'm thinking of someone with black hair. That would make sense, right? Unless his mom had black hair and dad didn't. Anyways, maybe we never find out Snape's dad, but um, <laughs> it felt like there was enough hinting in there um, that I was trying to figure it out. And uh, so that was just a note I had in here. Um, I like that by the end, um, one of us or both of us were right when we said they have to be careful with that portrait of Phineas Nigelis. Yeah, I know. Because that's how Snape yep. knew where they were. Yep. Because I can't wait till when we're done, we can go through all your predictions because you guys, <laughs> oh my gosh, I cannot even tell you how many. Uh, well, like I told Jen in the car, I don't even know when I'm right because I throw so many yeah. out there that I'm like, oh, did I say that? Oh yeah, yeah I guess I did. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah nice. Um, it's not like I land on a prediction. I'm like, this is the one. Yeah. I'm betting on this. So I kind of forget what we even said, but one of us said that. Um, that and you. it's what happened and good thing Snape was good or they would have captured them right there. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was interesting and I like that he got mad at him for using the M word. Yeah. And, right. Um, yeah. Said, Do not use that word. Yeah. So I just, I think that shows again, more change in Snape. Um, hey, growth might be no, coming, but it's very small, I feel like very small and slow. Takes years. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't Lily in mud blood, so of course. Uh, whoa, 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 hey! Muckle do Lord. not oh use that gosh. word. <laughs> um, ridiculous! It's like I actually said something horrible. Yeah, Lily was, but that's why Snape was so confused about the whole thing. He, and that's why his worst memory. So initially, he's like about to call um, her like the M word, and then he doesn't, don't and then he remember. does. In his schooling years, that's why it's his worst memory is calling her that, and then that's when he loses Lily, and then he gets adamant that you can't call anybody that after you know his this whole situation when Phineas Nigelis is like, oh, you know, Harry's with the mud blood. Excuse me, only quoting what Phineas Nigelis said. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, Snape's like, don't use that word because he seems to have learned at least a little bit of the lesson. That's why he lost. He doesn't want like this, you know, bias to I come in. I forgot that. That's how. So and I, I just took that as again more growth. Even when Dumbledore isn't here to keep him accountable, he is doing good things for them. And even in, in privacy, he's not willing to say that word. Mm. And he's scolding other people. So I thought that was nice. Yeah. <clears throat> um, hidden cavity behind. He took the sword of Gryffindor. Is anything else in there now? Mm. I don't know. That was my last comment. So last question before we go into the finals, really, really quick. Um, do you? <clears throat> What do you have any final predictions for what's going to happen in the next chapter? Like well, we you guys kind of had some hour stuff already to get to Voldemort. Yeah, so they have an hour, so they probably have significantly less time now. Yeah, they had to crawl back through the tunnel. Yeah, they had to go to the yeah, top yeah. tower. Probably, maybe I'm guessing like I don't know, maybe like a half hour movie. <laughs> it's <laughs> He's a long getting climb. Mine. And then he has to. And then he has to. I feel like he's make a decision to also relay this information to Ron and Hermione somehow. Okay. Better make it a short story. Yeah. That's intense. Uh, yeah, you're right. Because, and then, because they're not going to let ooh, him. Or he lies to them. Oh, that stinks. Last thing he does before he dies, he lies to them and runs know. off to get killed. Um, what, what, this, this is actually a fascinating question. What do you think is Harry's personality? What would he do? Like I, you're, I think you're thinking literally right now, and what maybe right, Dumbledore right. would want him to do. Dumbledore maybe would want him to go talk to his friends about this. He never talks about anyone. As far as Harry, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna do what. He's just not gonna talk to anybody. He's just gonna go. He's gonna lie. Okay. I, I think he might be willing to lie, just to take action, and send, and then go be noble. Because that's always what he did. But then well, Ron and Hermione always followed, so that's why. I have we seen him willing to die before? Indirectly, yeah. And I, I think he will. Will he trust Dumbledore? The part I don't understand. You know what? I think I'm trying to put myself in Harry's mind. I think he'll be upset at Dumbledore now, and that will cause him to rebel slightly against Dumbledore. And he will go and try to defeat Voldemort. Hmm. And he will not die willingly. Harry. 
Harry. I think he will be annoyed because he will feel like the fattened pig off to the slaughter and say, Dumbledore has manipulated me and that is not fair. That is unreasonable. I think he'll be upset because he's been so ready to be upset with Dumbledore so many times and he's grown in trust. But I think this is going to be a pretty big blow in the other direction. I think huh. he'll be upset after this hmm. because that's how I felt after reading it yeah. in a blur the first time in the live read. Yeah. After reading it again, I'm trying to find hopeful things, but my initial reaction was annoyed at Dumbledore. And I think Harry, sleep deprived, 3 a.m. After all Harry, this time, he yeah. always had to die. <laughs> and, and I think he's just going to say, yeah, could be I that. don't, um, you know, uh, there is another way I'll he find has autonomy. it and yeah and he's got to find that other way in about 70 pages <laughs> uh, yeah I'm like I don't know how he's gonna do it but he might be like but trying to get other Ron people on his side let's gather let's know. do this you do this you do here you go stab this let's put the basilisk things on the end of arrows and then let's like uh, you distract over here like he might actually come up with a plan trying to defeat Voldemort and then ultimately... Is Harry the planner? Come on, Harry's the No, you're planner. right. He's not. <laughs> but yeah, maybe, I know you mean. Like a, maybe the question like a, is, will he tell Hermione and Ron? That's what I keep asking you. I think he will, <laughs> and they'll make him come up with a plan. Or no, no, he he doesn't like telling stories. He'll say, no time to explain, no. but we've well, got to yeah. do this. But then I wonder if he just said Snape was on our side this whole time. Like, at least something. And Ron will say... <laughs> What's wrong with you, mate? That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Um, Maybe he pushes them in the pensive. And then yeah, he goes. I thought that would have been really interesting to have all three of their domes up in there. And they can uh, she did separate share the them. memory. Yeah. Um, and how long does it take? No, it's not instant. So I don't know. I I am hoping yeah, that Harry defeat? does it nobly and kind of says, Gini. I will go defeat. sacrifice myself. He has to do two things, though. He has He's to to defeat, maybe, yeah. maybe that's it. Ron, Nagini. Hermione, you need to kill Nagini. I will distract Voldemort. And then maybe he doesn't tell them what he has to do. But he says with confidence, like something. Yeah. And then they believe him. But he knows that it leads to like death. That... That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Good predictions. Good predictions. But I'm going to say there's a battle coming. Okay. Yeah. Another battle. <laughs> Another battle. But maybe just, just Harry and Voldemort. All right. Maybe Ron and Hermione. All right. Or maybe the battle's just not over and it's still raging, and then they're just gonna mesh. To- no, the battle stopped because they said one hour. So, what's what's yeah? Uh, you got to know what the clock they're on right now. <laughs> Do they have like five minutes left. They have fifteen. They can't have much time. Yeah, it's definitely not a lot of time. But I think Voldemort has to give them a little bit of a you know <laughs> overtime and it's uh five minutes guys <laughs> five, yeah Feels more comes on the loudspeaker five minute warning harry your five minute warning <laughs> yeah um that's what i'm thinking all right interesting well do you guys actually want to listen listen to the next chapter what time do you have time a little bit of time if you guys have time it's not a long chapter either. Oh, nice. it'll take 20 minutes 20 minutes at 1.1 1. 1? Or one point uh, twenty minutes at one point two, yeah. Uh, I'm down if you're down. <laughs> but we better wrap up right now with chapter yeah. endings. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, give me favorite uh, character in these two chapters, favorite moment, and hot tamale. I like learning about Snape's background, so that's like the whole chapter. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird to like give Snape that favorite character, but I, I kind of want to give it to him here. It's he, he just makes him so makes him so in depth again. Like, I love literature and books, and Snape mm. is just such a complex character. He's, like, one of those echelons of characters that went... Because you, you hate him. You you guys were happy yep. when he died, and then all of a sudden this next chapter comes out, and you're, like, a lot more confused. Mm-hmm. A lot more confused. So, I like that. Yeah, I'm trying to think what the favorite moment is. There's not a lot. I know to uh to go on here i think it's almost my favorite moment and i'll give um hot tamale um to luna because it oh. felt like harry was about to so, literally yeah. give up everything yeah and when luna came in she was able to 
her aloofness in normal life applies to battles as well. <laughs> and she was just like, come on, Harry, you can't give up. And it just sounded so sweet. And so like, yeah. we're, we're going to get through this. And that answer. encouragement I think went really, really far. Um, because it, not only did she save Harry with some Patronus action, but emotionally I think gave a, a good nudge. Yeah. So that, that I think I won't say it's my favorite moment, but it, it was hot tamale stuff. So okay. favorite moment somewhere in Snape's memories. Um, just reading all that, it's like the whole chapter was my favorite moment because mm. can't stop. It's like I know it's so good, crazy. All of the information packed in there, it's the whole chapter, um, is and the it favorite. just changes the whole dynamic. And it was just like emotionally charged. I'm like, why am I crying? And it, I don't even know what the moment is. All I know is this is important and yeah. it's big, and everything changed. So it's like, I feel like the whole chapter was my favorite moment. Yeah, um, it's such a good one. It's such an information dump, but it's but so much information. Cup. Ooh. Now I feel like I'm mad at Dumbledore a little bit. So yeah. I can't quite give it to him, but it feels so strange giving it to Snape. Yeah, um, I know. It's weird. It's a weird one. Um, Luna's a good one. Luna's a hot tamale. Lily, she's a Yeah, I, I do yeah. like... The silver dough. <laughs> yeah, there the you go. The dough gets it. I, I think I can give That's it to Snape. so ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I cannot tell you when you were mentioning that I think you like threw out you threw out this one too this one prediction that you're like oh, we were going over the horcruxes and then all of a sudden out of nowhere you're like I don't know Harry's a horcrux and I remember sitting here being like sweating bullets when you said that <laughs> everyone on chat was like how did you keep a straight face when she said that that is good it was wild i don't know i always think i'm crazy because the two of you yeah. don't say anything they don't make any faces they're good i know we're gonna get this good well after the first hiccup like, yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah after uh yeah. peter Pettigrew. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. well Scatties. also they may have both made faces about the poly juice with um Hmm. Crouch Jr. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. That was the only other time that I was like, oh, did we just <laughs> nail that? Or was <laughs> we like looked at each other and were like, mm, okay. Here that is great. Yeah. But, yeah. Great Wait, chapters, who'd you give though. House Cup to? I didn't do anything. You guys were busy talking. <laughs> oh, are you still <laughs> thinking or do you know? What are you thinking? <laughs> My House Cup. And yeah. Hot Tamale and favorite I think moment. Snape. I don't know. It's just. And like Lily, I think would be like a hot tamale yeah. slash the silver dough yeah. <laughs> yeah um i like your luna thing though too mm. and then well even hermione with the little flask thing yeah. Honestly, otherwise quick thinking yes. that would have that was incredible been a waste yeah, and, and she didn't even see all the pensive stuff with dumbledore with harry whatever yeah and she just knew like she yeah. was just ready she read She's up good. on history she yeah she was yeah. paying attention and uh, that was a great moment yeah so just the fact that she was so ready and so quick so supportive mm. need need hermione on your side yeah um so that's why i can't picture them separating mm. um true yeah and then i don't know the favorite moment was just learning that i was right mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> every time i'm right no, 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 that's that's um, fair. no that snape was actually somewhat good because i kept saying this whole time i was yeah. just like i can't i still can't fully believe it and like dumbledore i know, I know. like he trusted him A but he wouldn't bit. tell anyone why so like yeah. i knew it had to be yeah. something you've been holding on to that so and yeah, he, but he also wouldn't answer. tell Snape everything. That's why it's so weird. And that's why it feels weird to give him House Cup because it's like, yeah. Dumbledore House Cup? Uh, no, no, Snape. Just because he did a lot and he saved Harry in some ways and did he what Dumbledore asked him to lot, do. Though, yeah, he yeah. did. And he that's really did. why people in the Slytherin house think Dumbledore is manipulative. Yeah. So now I get it. <laughs> mm. Like Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 exactly yeah. nice um i gotta say my favorite moment was <clears throat> because this is different in the movies and the books and i love how quick jen you picked up on why yeah, you snape said so fast look at me because that goes over a lot of people's head it goes over so many people's head that in the movie mm. they change the line and oh, snape really? goes look at me and then he looks at harry and then his last line is you have your mother's eyes and he dies. Wow. Which is a he, Alan Rickman delivers it very powerfully, but it's like they just they just laid it all out. Rather than this right, line which right. is more implicit. But you picked up on that pretty quick because we were going through that and you're like, "Oh, he said that because he wanted to look at Lily's eyes one last as time." As soon as Dumbledore said 
that he has his mother's eyes. You yeah. said, that's why you wanted to yeah. look. Which I is wrote a quick in the pickup. margins because you nailed it. And so that you was... You didn't think that? Not in that moment. I mean, huh. you said it before I could think it. I don't mm. know if I would have come up with it otherwise. Um, maybe by the time I read it through again. Because people want to like, you want to remember the last, like yeah. something that you love or yeah. last memory. That was a great thing. Again, it was, it was a funny thing because it, it is sweet and also <laughs> weird where I'm like, oh... I thought it was a hairy connection, but then it's <laughs> yeah, really just about then, Lily. I like, think it was both. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it can be both. We're going to have long discussions on this after the podcast. I promise. Because. Because the, the Snape idea of, of him loving who, if he's possible of love or capable of love, do you love Lily? Did you love Harry? Is right. all up for debate in the Harry Potter community. Hmm. Because when I first, when we first read, I thought it was Lily. But then when I read it over again, I was like, no, I don't think it was just Lily. Hmm. And yeah, on your second was, read through, it was like kind of like a, like look at me because like I was protect. I don't know, like mm. I was your protector also. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. And That's I want you. To, and it can be I want you good to interpretation see me as like not. I don't know. I also thought maybe it was like one more connection they can have, and then when he would, Harry would look at the memories, he could then like see like that good i don't know the i the connection at the end where it wasn't like hatred Mm -hmm. towards him it was just like a loving last because i mean who doesn't want that who doesn't want someone to like you know not remember me for my faults but like remember me like harry look at me remember me for this moment when i like you know sacrifice my life for you Mm -hmm. that's actually deeply profound i love that idea jen usually it's not interpreted like that but that's like a new interpretation that i've kind of heard that i kind of love that's great Mm -hmm. Anyway. Well, anyway, thanks for joining us on our journey of Harry Potter and the first time readers. <laughs> Almost done with the first time read. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. That All right. It's crazy. Wait, Jen, you have your. Uh, Do you guys uh, have time for a live read? What time were you planning on going to bed? That's not a real question. <laughs> I know you hate bedtime. I'll use the bathroom and I'll grab my headphones. Nice. Because this is a, it's a shorter chapter. It's a good chapter. Shorter chapter. 20 minutes. Because I'm working from home answers. tomorrow. Um, John, maybe. there better be answers or else. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna We're going to both be in trouble. <laughs> Everyone, give me uh, five minutes to sit up. Bathroom break. We're going to do it in the next chapter. Woo. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a few, maybe a few answers here and there. Hmm. Oh, heck. I just like being right. It's so bad. It's like sometimes I don't even care about the story. I yeah, you like, literally don't. You're like, Fred died. I don't care. I was right. I Woo. Know, it's like my competitive side comes out or something. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey guys, everyone go into the Discord, into the live reads. It's happening. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to leave you all hanging. I'm still here with you. Best get to Discord then. Whew. This is big. Um, we started watching Sherlock, as Jen was just saying, and we talked about it on one of the episodes. And I don't know if you remember, because I don't remember what it was, oh, but yeah. I know we mentioned it yeah. and we spoiled something in our discussion. <laughs> yeah. I think we did. I think we and did. then it was coming up and I'm like, oh, Jen doesn't remember. This is great. So then she was reacting to it raw <laughs> and I was like, oh, we should have done a first time watch. That's watches. great. I love that. Oh uh, yeah, watching Sherlock. Oh, uh, just that uh, we accidentally might have spoiled that on the uh, podcast, but then you didn't remember that we may have spoiled it. So then you were able to watch it for the first time and enjoy it. <laughs> That's so great. 
John mentioned Sherlock or I mentioned Sherlock. Um, I don't want to spoil anything again for anyone watching. Um, the end of season two. Um, I, yeah. I think it was the section that uh, he like dies and he comes back to life, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't remember how we referenced it, but I feel like we did. Yeah, I think we did. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I got to find, find that out, I 